Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Rebecca Lammers. I am a voter in Ohio, and I also live in London. So, uh, and I am a volunteer for Democrats Abroad. I am the chair of the Democrats Abroad Taxation Task Force, um, for which we have many volunteers who are working on this particular uh, campaign activity, uh, which we're going to talk through here in a minute. Uh, but basically, we're running a campaign at the moment where we're encouraging uh, Democrats Abroad members to contact their Democratic candidates to um, fill in this candidate questionnaire that we have on our website. And so uh, we need your help to contact because there are over 400 house reps uh, in, in the United States and uh, we can't do it all. There's too many, so we need your help. So um, just to kind of um, go through some of the housekeeping here, this is the, the disclaimer, um, we're, we're not advisors or anything. This is a campaign outreach activity anyway, but just left this up here just in case. Um, so for the most part, this shouldn't be a long webinar, we're basically just going to walk you through the steps of how to contact your uh, House uh, Democratic candidate uh, in order to ask them to fill in the candidate questionnaire. And uh, if you have any questions, I would recommend that we save those for the end. So just as we're talking, if a question comes to mind, uh, just put write it on the side. And then once we get to the end, then we'll take questions. Um, and there we're a small enough group, so I'm, I'm happy for people to unmute and, and we can take questions verbally, or you can type it in the chat box if you prefer what, uh, your choice. Um, so why are we asking Democrats abroad members to fill in a candidate, or sorry, to ask their candidates to fill in a candidate questionnaire? Um, well, there's a few different reasons and benefits to doing this. Um, the first thing is, is that uh, our questionnaire is focused on American abroad issues, uh, and more often than not, when we get emails from Democrats abroad members who are asking questions about who to vote for, um, obviously, we're encouraging them to vote for the Democratic candidate. Uh, and then the next question is, where do they stand on our issues? Well, um, it, it seems to be that often candidates don't include information on our unique American Abroad Issues. And so this candidate questionnaire is to help them, help us, help you uh, engage them on our issues. Uh, so it, one of the biggest things that this activity does is it reminds candidates that they represent, if they get elected, constituents overseas. Um, and one of the issues that we face in our advocacy work is that because we're outside of the country, we're out of um, uh, we're out of sight, out of mind. And so this really helps us in terms of our advocacy work so that it reminds them that we exist. Um, the other thing is that it helps educate them about our unique issues. Um, taxes and voting is always top issues, but it includes questions on Social Security, Medicare, and um, embassy and consulate services. Um, it also helps in terms of building a relationship for when they get elected. So obviously these are candidates, so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get elected. They need to win um, the votes in order to get elected. Um, but it also helps us in terms of starting to open up a dialogue on our issues, because once they are elected, we, as Democrats abroad, would then work to engage with them on and, and when we go to Washington DC um, to meet with them in order to build um, relationships and get them on board to support our issues, whether that's introducing a bill in Congress um, or any other kind of support that they may be willing to lend on our advocacy work. Um, and finally, it's mutually beneficial. So they engage with Democrats abroad, that shows support on our issues, which in, help, in turn helps us get more votes for them. So it's a it's a win-win overall for, for everybody there. Um, just a reminder before we go into it, um, some candidates are already members of Congress. So when they're, they're already uh, in, in seat, but they're running for re-election, those individuals are called an incumbent. 
and any candidate that is not already a member of Congress is called a non-incumbent candidate. So just some lingo in case you weren't aware. Um, and you are sending the questionnaire to the candidates campaigns, not to your congressional members office if they are an incumbent. Um, so I hope I hope that's clear. Um, a lot of these um, like members of Congress. So if they're they are an incumbent, they'll have two offices. They'll have one congressional office, which is in charge of congressional work, and they'll have one uh, campaign office for their um, reelection um, purposes. So those are completely different uh, offices, and they're also completely different staff. They're actually not. Uh, there are a lot of uh, laws in terms of what they can and can't say between most of the time there's a firewall so it's just something to point out here that you are not contacting your member of congress you're contacting their their campaign if they are an incumbent so i hope that's clear um so just a another thing to point out is that we ran this as like a trial so we did this activity for the first time for the 2022 midterms um, and I just wanted to share the results so that people understand that we do get results off, off of this activity. So in 2022, when we just did this as like a trial, we got 34 candidates to respond to the candidate questionnaire. And um, we had 25 who said that they support residency-based taxation, which I know is a big issue for our members. Um, and out of the candidates that responded, seven, seven of them got elected, uh, and then also seven of them committed to joining the Congressional Americans Abroad Caucus, uh, which is a really important caucus within the House in order to help garner support on our issues. Um, and additionally, we had six co-sponsors um, on the American Abroad bills that we are trying to get people to, to fill in. And I also wanted to make a point here. What was really interesting is for the incumbents, so those who are already elected, who are running for re-election, um, a lot of those people who um, said that they would join the Americans Abroad Caucus, off the back of this questionnaire, they then joined. Um, and also for those that said that they would co-sponsor off the back of this questionnaire, they co-sponsored on those bills. So by asking to fill in the questionnaire, it then raised awareness about the caucus and these bills and got them to join or co-sign. So it's a really uh, concrete, positive activity um, engaging in democracy, basically, in, in, and especially to help on our issues. <clears throat> um, so I just want to make that point that we this this activity does deliver results. So now I'm going to hand it over to Mary, who's going to uh, take us through the steps on uh, what you need to do in order to send the candidate questionnaire. Hi, everybody. Um, Mary Moritz. I'm a New Jersey 7 voter, and I also live in France, like many of you. Um, I've been working on the campaign, this uh, this outreach uh, since 2022. I helped Rebecca do um, to basically set up the the templates and the ideas and how we were going to contact the candidates. Um, I've already started doing some candidate outreach uh, before, prior to this. Um, some some of the primary work because there are still primaries that are that haven't happened. And, um, and now I'm focusing on um, my personal uh, district, which is 07. And this is the example we're gonna go through today and um, <clears throat> about how I found out who my candidate was because she is not an incumbent. So the first thing um, I needed to do was to go onto Ballotpedia. Uh, I needed to, when I went onto Ballotpedia, I have to uh, type in my US voting address and I have to select the number five election and we're gonna be going through this um, for you live and you'll see how I found the um, who my candidate is. 
Um, there are just, there are very specific steps where you can see them here in front of you. And once you get to uh, clicking the overview button, you will bring up uh, the, the candidate's personal, personal page on Ballotpedia, which will get you to the, um, to find out how to get in contact with your candidate. Rebecca, are you ready to go through this? Yes. Okay. So, oh, yes. Here, I'm going to start with here because this is the main page that we've sent out to everybody, which explains the um, uh, the steps. Mm -hmm. But um, so, I think for the most part, unless you vote in Florida or the New York second district, we, we actually have not that many. We, we do have some submitted so far, but we don't have that many. So for the right. most part, most people on the call um, can see that we, uh, we don't have a questionnaire for their candidate yet. So, um, so then you go to the next step, which is going to Ballotpedia here. Right. And then, Mary, what's your um, address again? So we're going to put in um, the address of my favorite diner in uh, the town I lived in that I would go and eat at every time I would be in the morning, have breakfast before I was going back to France. Uh, 62 Mountain Boulevard. Warren. New oh. Jersey. There you go. There it is. Yep. And then you don't need to put in your email address. That's optional. Right. So this is so what it brings you to is it tells you when the election is, tells you how many days are left. And then you just press the arrow to bring you to the next page on the bottom. There you go. Um, it tells you that you have three candidates. So there is a, a Republican, a Democrat, and probably an independent. Uh, with no ballot measures, and you go down and press go. We'll be working uh, with the House. So it's the third choice in New Jersey. It might be different for each state that you're in. But then you press the arrow down wherever your House is. And here we have, so um, the Republican uh, is the incumbent and Susan Altman is the Democrat Party. And there's actually four different candidates. Interesting. Okay. Press there. This will bring up, uh, this is sort of a, it, it's like a table almost because you can scan through the candidates, but Susan Altman is the one on the left. Uh, and there you get her contact information, but um, I would encourage, well, you can, you can have the contact information there, which you can open uh, each, I would encourage you to open each one in a tab if you're going to do it through there. Uh, interesting, there's an email there, okay, and I yeah. totally missed that. <laughs> I did too, um, uh, that's, that's helpful to know. Yeah, that's uh, helpful to know, because we, I totally missed that here, there was an email. Um, if you go up onto the top, uh, I just pressed overview that brought me to the main, her main page, where if you go down under her picture, you will see campaign website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, et cetera. Um, again, keep with just the campaign information, even though she lists personal fa Facebook and personal Instagram, I would um, simply keep with the campaign information. I did this um, exercise myself and I didn't see that there was an email. So I initially went to the campaign website first because usually on the campaign website, um, not usually, I would say three times out of four on the campaign website, you can find an email address there. Um, so here's her homepage. And 
I usually, if it's not on the top menu where it says contact, I usually uh, scroll down to the bottom and sometimes hidden all the way on the bottom as we go down. Um, they have get involved, but that usually means either becoming a volunteer or giving money. Uh, I got down to the bottom and I didn't see anything. So I subsequently went through all of her pages. I uh, didn't see anything on any of the other pages. And so I clicked on her Facebook and I clicked on, aha, there we go. Um, I clicked on her, um, uh, what do you call it? I clicked on her uh, Instagram. I clicked on her Twitter account, et cetera. Um, and here we go. This is where we get her email address. There are times where you will not have an email address, and we will talk about that later on, on what to do. Okay. Can we go back to the slides? We'll go back to the slides. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we've looked up the Canada. We have the information. What do we do? We've gone over that and that. And sometimes there's none at all. So you got to get creative. Um, so you you send the message that it would be that's in the template that you will all get. Um, the best ways to initiate first contact are from or by email, like we said. If you sometimes they don't have an email address, but they have a contact form. So what you do is you just cut and paste the template and put it into the contact form. And then the third way is through social media. If you cannot get a uh, an email address, there's no contact form, but they are accessible and you can send them messages or uh, direct messaging over social media. Usually I find Messenger is the easiest one to get a response through. Then you can send the message over Messenger. You can all, we'll talk about this later, but you can also ask them eventually to send you an email. Um, so you send a message all at once to all three places. Um, you don't know when you're going to see their message. You're not spamming them. You're increasing your chances of seeing the message and replying. Often what I do is I email and then I send up a follow up on Messenger and I say, hey, I just emailed you. Can you tell me if you got it? And I wait for to see an answer if I get an answer either via email or via uh, Messenger. Next, thank you. Okay, so you found the email. Next, we're gonna take a look at the template. This is basically something we've put together that will uh, help you present who you are. Uh, you, you know, uh, address the candidate by their first and last name. Um, you give your name, your, the state and the district you vote in. I vote in New Jersey 7 and where the city and the country you're living in now. Um, it's good to maybe not tell them how long you've been living in the country. Just tell them that that's where you're living now. They don't need to know anything else. And then just ask them, would you please ask this, you know, answer this questionnaire. And the questionnaire is already in there. They, they've got the link, ploop. And basically this gives them all the information that they need to know. Here's the contact form. This is an uh, example of a contact form. Um, like you, like we just said, you can cut and paste the entire template after you've tweaked it in right into the contact form and send it off. With the contact forms in particular, sometimes you get an email back uh, from, from the campaign confirming that you have contacted them. And when you get the email back, there's a, you get it from an email. Sometimes it'll be info at the campaign name, et cetera. Then you can immediately turn around and send off another one. Ah, okay. I just sent it through the contact form. Did you get it? Here it is again. You can double up on them. That's fine. So 
all, almost all social media has a way to private message. This is otherwise known as a DM, I think, a direct message. And um, I originally had not seen that Swaltman had info at, a, at an email. And so I went in and looked up on her social media. And sure enough, on all three, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, she is, you can DM her. Sometimes uh, campaigns lock it down and you can't, um, but here you can. And so I simply sent her off yesterday and I don't know if I have an example, if you wanna, um, there we go. Uh, I sent her off a thing. Um, I sent her off the, the template yesterday and then asked her if she had, a, if she could send me an, an email address. I just sort of tacked that on. Could you send me an email address and I'll send this to you another way. Now, once we send off the first, the initial email, I am going to say that I about 90% of the chance I never got back an, an, a response right away. I would even say maybe 95%. Everything I've done so far has always needed follow-up in order to get, to begin to engage somebody. You're never going to engage the candidate themselves, but you need to engage someone in their campaign. And so the follow-up is really important. I usually do follow-up, uh, it depends. I, I've After I've sent sort of my blitz out um, and I wait, if it's easy to email, I'll send down another email. Hi, I sent you an email about three days ago, two days ago, haven't heard back, just wanted to make sure you got it. Do you have any questions? Same on social media. I need to, I found that I need to ask at least once, if not twice. And if they're going to respond, if it's on their queue of things to do or to respond, or if we've pick to their interest, they will respond after the, after the second, sometimes the third way to follow up. So basically, don't expect, expect a response right away. Be patient and persistent. Once someone has answered me and I engage with them and I can, and they say, yep, yeah, it's on our list of things to do, usually they will complete it. Sometimes they need a little bit of prodding, a little bit more prodding, but they will do it. So this is um, an example from the 2022 campaign that I worked on contacting new, uh, candidates for a seat in New York. And I contacted her initially over Facebook. And I got back very quickly a um, response from a member of her team, uh, well, Sarah, but she gave me a, an email where I could send the information to which was great. As soon as I got somebody to engage with me, I knew this was gonna, this was gonna work. And I just needed to make sure they got the information and that I stayed on top of them on getting the information back to us. Next slide, please. So what I immediately did with that email was I sent a, a follow-up email um, just saying, thanks, I got your information, here's what we need, et cetera. This is, I was following a template that we set up back in 2022, more or less for this, tip of, this, uh, this uh, specific campaign outreach. Um, Pedro responded to me um, right away and basically told me it, my message went to spam and they have it. And I stayed open to him, great. Looking forward to getting your answers. Get back to me if you have any questions. If they do have questions and they get back to you, for instance, with very specific questions, some people, um, we recently had a candidate ask for the exact number of overseas voters in their district. And so just get in touch with campaigning, um, Rebecca or campaigning or the email that you have in order to get in touch with us at the task force. 
and we will get that information for you. Any information that the candidate asks for, uh, just forward it and we will get that information to you. So after I engaged Pedro, I actually had to send him a, a friendly reminder uh, to do some follow-up. We had agreed that um, July 6th, uh, uh, I think we had agreed that they would answer it by July 6th um, or that July 6th was some sort of deadline. I can't remember what it was, but um, I prodded him a little bit. Again, just remember, this would be great. Let's do it. If you have any problems, I'm available. And then I got a, a response almost immediately back from Pedro that it was, uh, and I and we got the answers back. And it was a, I have a very uh, lovely interaction. It was efficient, if you ask me. Uh, I had to stay, of course, I had to stay vigilant and uh, sort of, you know, prod him a little bit, but we got the answers back and we were able to put her answers online and they were able to use it on their end the way they wanted to too. Um, so that's like, that was like the, almost the ideal interaction, if you will. Then sometimes um, you reach out, you reach out again, and you reach out again and there's nothing. So this was over the period of a week. You can see I wrote a uh, first the 31st of August, the 3rd of September, the 6th of September. I left three days, more or less three or four days in between each one, never got engaged, never got a response, never got any sort of uh, confirmation they'd received it, they're out. That's about the best you can do. I do believe I reached out to him also on um, social media, but they just weren't gonna do it. C'est la vie. Next. And now, if you have any questions. That's it. Yeah. It says, um, that's kind of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I did see one question pop up. Uh, so Linda asked, when I write to candidates, I need to pick a category of what my topic is. Voting isn't always on offer and other is not always on offer. Any suggestions of what topic we pick? Um, I would say do double check that you're not submitting something on their congressional website that sounds like you might be on the wrong website because that is a requirement a lot of the time for incumbents who so do double check that you are submitting on their campaign website and not their congressional website but if for whatever reason that is on your campaign website on the campaign website um pick the best option that you can especially if it's a requirement just pick something so that it it gets sent through i've never had my i'm just going to say um, the contact form i've never had to pick um a why uh the contact form on the candidate website um i've had to put in maybe a subject myself but there's never been a drop down menu. Yeah, that's why it sounded like mm, the congressional website. Mm. So do do be careful about that. Um, uh, the next question is, what about if one cannot or will not be voting down ballot? Um, so this is not actually a down ballot race. So what we're talking about here is contacting your house representative, um, which is a federal election. So this is not a state or local election. So th this is a really great question. I'm really glad that you asked. Um, there is this misperception that Americans abroad can only vote for president. That is not correct. Americans abroad have the right to vote in all federal elections. It's up to the state to determine whether you can vote in the state and local elections, but federal elections are for president, Senate, and House of Representatives. And the race that we're talking about right now is your House of Representatives, which is actually a federal election. So you will be able to vote for your House 
um, for the house race. So that is not in dispute. So um, yeah, very happy to answer any other questions on the who who can and can't vote in in certain races. Um, but I hope that clarifies that you definitely can vote and you should vote in the House race because these are the important that the Senate and the House are by far the most important races when it comes to Americans abroad issues because these Congress is the one that decides the issues that most impact us. So definitely do strongly encourage you to vote in, in those races. Um, the next question is, out of curiosity, how many Americans abroad were in your district? And do you know if the number matters to your response? I'm going to answer that. I actually looked up that number for someone else. Um, this was a, a district out in the um, eastern part, the eastern half of Long Island. And um, we, it, it's a little complicated because we, the numbers we have are by county. They're actually not by district, they're by counties. And some counties are split um, uh, into halfway into another district or just a small part into another district, et cetera. But we were able to give the, him a number for um, I, the county that covered most of Long Island. And it was about um, 2,300, if I remember correctly. Um, th does that matter to the candidate? Um, it's good to get the numbers to them. I, I would say that more often than not, candidates are surprised at how many overseas votes there are. Mm -hmm. They often don't think about us. And so when we give them the number, they're almost always surprised at how big the number is. So I, I would say majority of cases, it helps. And a lot of, uh, for instance, I think it's Washington State that has the largest number of overseas mm. um, voters, uh, which you would sort of be like, oh, why is that? But I do believe it's because of um, the military. Yep. And so they they need to be aware of, um, you know, and sometimes there's tiny states and you think, you know, but they're but they're in the middle of the list. How is that? Well, because there's military bases. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there for now, but um I am I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'm I'm happy to to hang out. Um I just wanted to give a shout out to um Sharla who's helping put um links in the chat box for this. So um you can go look up the candidate, you can also go and click on the link. I think it was shared earlier for the instructions on how to answer, um, or sorry, how to start sending out your, uh, contacting your, your candidate. So hopefully this has helped give you the structure and what does and doesn't happen. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can contact us on campaigning at democratsabroad.org. We'll and if anyone... One. If anyone, if this is the first time you're doing this work, everybody has the first time they're doing this work. I went specifically into this work because I had never done it before. And it was, I felt it was a little intimidating. Um, now I understand how it works. And so I am available to give an extra little boost, some, uh, some help uh, with anybody who would like to just maybe like to be walked through the process the first time. Um, please get in touch with us. Yeah, don't don't hesitate to reach out if you would like to get your candidate to answer, but you're still unsure or hesitant. Please contact us on campaigning at democratsabroad.org. Um, and again, uh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you for all of your your important help on this. Uh, thank you, Charlotte, for uh, she's doing a lot of work in the background to help us stay in line on this. Um, and uh, yeah. Any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out.